In this video, we're going to take a preliminary look at scope layers in 3D Coat as a build 4.8.23. If you don't see the Layers panel in the Sculpt workspace, you can access it from the Windows menu. Under Pop-ups, click Layers. The Layers panel is the exact same one that you have in the Paint workspace when working on paint objects. What I have here is a high poly sculpt and a low poly paint object in the same viewport or taking up the same space. However, one of them is native to the paint workspace and the other one is just borrowing the paint workspace. The high poly or the voxel object are native to the sculpt workspace, meaning you import the object there or you create it from scratch in this environment. But when you want to paint, rather than painting on a UV mapped version, you're actually painting on the vertices. It's like poly painting in ZBrush, for example. You could vertex paint on a high poly sculpt, but the depth channel was never available. Sculpt Layers was actually available for 3 coat and has been for years, but it was always limited to paint objects. So let me hide this paint object for just a moment. And now all we're looking at is that sculpt object from the paint workspace. I'm going to turn wireframe on and you can see how dense it is. Okay. I can go to the view menu and check show voxels in paint room to hide that. So now all I see are paint objects when they are in the scene you can have paint layers or just layers in general for different meshes here. So I can have layers that are applied to a low polygon object like this. And in the same panel, I can have layers that are applied to that high poly sculpt that we had earlier. And what I do is I make sure to name my layers accordingly. Okay, so let me do a quick demonstration here. I want to create a new layer. And I'm going to name it ahead of time. I want to make sure depth is enabled. Maybe color and glossiness. If I want a metallic type of paint, I would increase the metalness here as well. I'll first use a brush, and then we might use a smart material later. But uh, for now, I want to use a stamp draw mode, regular paint brush. And I will choose some kind of brush alpha, something like that, maybe. Okay, let me check my depth. When you are applying depth here in the paint workspace, you can use additive mode, blending mode, or maximum mode. I'll stick with add. Now on a paint object like this, you can see it extruding because in the view menu, I have show displaced mesh checked. So whatever I'm painting with a depth channel, 3D coat will extrude it using displacement. Just below that, you have the adjust tessellation option. It's essentially like adding a smoothing modifier to this object here. So it's gonna use a much higher polygon version under the hood to actually make this displacement work. So I increase the subdivision per UV map here. Let me increase it to 10. You want to be a little bit careful depending on your system resources, but I'll hit OK. Now, if I don't want that to be visible, I can hit my hotkey or go to the view menu and just do it manually. You can see how I'm just looking at normal map relief now. That's pretty much how sculpt layers worked in 3D Coat previously, and it still does work this way. But the typical workflow was essentially getting to the high resolution stage of a sculpt and then baking to a low polygon target like this and handling a lot of your detail here in the paint workspace during the texture stage. That wasn't very practical for a lot of people. That's why this was a much requested feature to add sculpt layers. Let me hide this because users typically will want the sculpt layer functionality on their high poly sculpts. Again, as you're working 
you want to be able to go back and modulate the work that you've done. So let's go to view, check show voxels in paint room. And I already did quite a bit of work on this layer. And I should mention while I'm at it that the more work you do on a particular layer, the slower it may be when you're scrubbing the depth slider. A lot of it depends on the density of the model too, but uh, this one, for example, if I try to scrub, it's going to be rather slow because there was a lot of work done on this layer. If I change the depth opacity to zero, you can see what I mean. Let's go to the Sculpt workspace. And I have these side by side here. So let me hide the eyes. Let's say you or maybe the art director are trying to decide, do you want this to be more creature or more um, reptilian-like, or do you want it to be more human-esque? With the introduction of Sculpt Layers, we now have the flexibility and freedom to make that decision at any point. So let's change this to 50%. And now it's somewhere in between that reptile type of look and the humanoid look. So let's go to 100. So maybe 80%. Let's try 70. And I'm going to turn wireframe off. Um, another change I made was on the hand here. I took this and basically used a trim brush to trim it all the way down to the base knuckle here. And then I used a preset model uh, for the finger. And uh, just moved it over here for the thumb. And that model, what I did is I went to the Primness tool, clicked on that, and from the model's palette, I selected that object that made the model a freeform primitive. Once the line in place, I hit the Apply button, and it performed a Union Boolean operation with the creature model. When you are working with Booleans, keep in mind that you will lose all the relevant information where you create the Boolean, but everything else outside of that will be preserved. So if I sculpt some scales or skin texture here, but then apply the Boolean in the thumb region, then only this area will I lose that information, only where the Boolean was applied. Okay, so let's hide that finger. So what I want to do is go back to this one, go back to 100. And you can see it's much smoother. Again, this is in the beta stage. We can erase sculpt layer detail using erase layers, or in the paint workspace, we can use tools here. We can use the erase brush. We can also sculpt with the paintbrush. So let me go ahead and do something now here on this test layer. I'll delete that one and create a new one. And I will go ahead and sculpt something here. Maybe I want to change it to blend. So it blends nicely with the other details. You might notice that I'm able to paint and sculpt at the same time here in this environment. I can also use different smart materials. 